All right, Alyssa, thank you for your patience. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so can I just start whenever? Yep. Okay. My R&D this year was on testing configurations for a uh, Piston V Super Rock. That's... Yeah? Okay. So, uh, one of the events at NARAM this year is V Super Rock. And as with most Super Rock events, uh, most competitors usually go for safety and qualified flights and choose not to piston their models, as most L2D flights would want to do. But instead of going that route, just, just aiming for safety, I wanted to uh, see what the best Super Rock design and piston combo was to maximize height without maximizing the risk of your model being disqualified. So for planning, I decided to make three piston lengths, uh, the 17 inch, the 34 inch, and the 68 inch. Uh, all of them are floating, use floating brass piston heads and external clips, uh, as it is one of the most common piston designs. Uh, for super rock models, I decided to do three initial designs, with one of them being a base line model to compare all the other designs to. And every model type would have a control, control flights for a baseline altitude to compare what the different piston lengths their altitude to. Um, and then based on the results of those three initial uh, model types, I would make, design, and test more Super Rock designs. But I also had one criteria that the models needed to be made from commercially available, commonly found parts so that it'd be easier for other competitors to build. So I decided to use peanut altimeters for reliability, and I documented them with GoPro cameras and a held head, handheld camera. Uh, also, I used clay ballast to make the weight of the models consistent between flights of the same type uh, to account for any accidental weight changes from maybe ejection charge, the crud, or changes in the uh, recovery system. Okay, for building, I uh, modified a tower that I already had for use for the Super Rocks. Um, all models had a max used the maximum length uh, for a B Super Rock of 200 centimeters. And all models had, here we go, uh, three G10 0.020 fiberglass fins. And all of them used a 18 millimeter booster with various um, nose sections connected by a, a coupler that held the altimeter, as you can see here. It had vent holes so that it could detect the pressure. Okay. <laughs> so my three initial models was the control model, which is made from all 18 millimeter tubing. Here it is right here. And then the model two had an 18 millimeter booster with the with a um, six millimeter section right here and then model three had an 18 millimeter to a 13 millimeter okay so model one was the control it weighed 79.83 grams and I decided that for a target weight to base all of my flights to of 82 grams it was easy to um, weigh to and this is the heaviest, but also the strongest of the three designs. Testing, I did 12 flights. Um, it flew an average of 286 feet without a piston, and 446 with a 68-inch piston. And overall, there was a 55.9 altitude increase between the two. And so I have a video. Is this going to work? Probably. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Median I found. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's linking to a media file you don't have on your drive. I don't know if I have it on this one. Well, okay, we might just. Skip. I want to do this one. Yeah, okay. So, model two was the 18 to 6 model. Um, it weighs 8.31 grams lighter than the control model, but it was the weakest of the three. There were three test flights. Um, throughout the testing, there was a lot of bending on the upper portion on launch. And on the third flight, uh, the six millimeter portion folded 
as you can see there. So I decided to design and reinforce this model, and from that came model 2B, which was you know, the reinforced version with a slightly larger diameter tube over it, and it weighed 5.73 grams lighter. And there were seven flights on these, uh, 333 feet, no piston, 530 width, a 68, and a 59.2% increase. So the third model, uh, 2.92, gram slider, so slightly heavier, and it was weaker than the control, but stronger than the Model 2. Uh, 3.4 feet, no piston, uh, 508.5 with a 68 pin piston, but a large increase of 61.9. So initial model results, I determined that 2B and Model 3 would uh, did work, they did not fold. Um, so I wanted to make more designs based off of the success of these two. So I designed uh, three other models, um, 18 to 13 to 6, which I have here. Actually, yes I do. Okay, here's 6, 13, and then the 18 portion. And then model 5, which was an 18 to a BT3 model. And then model 6, which was a remake of model 3, except with a longer portion of the rocket being 13 millimeters instead of 18. Unfortunately, only uh, one worked uh, well enough to beat the other, the initial three. The other two flew well, did not fold or anything, but they did not perform as well as 2B, for example. Model four, so this is the 18 to 13 to six. It weighed 2.92 grams lighter, which was not that much lighter, but it was a lot stronger than 2B. And there were 11 test flights of these, which flew an average of 323 uh, feet with no piston, and an average of 530.7 with the 68. And there is an overall increase of 64.3% altitude, which was the highest that I had. Um, and then, unfortunately on one flight, uh, the model bent badly due to uh, higher winds. So at that point I decided to add a windshield to my tower, and you can see both the tower and the windshield as the model does hang out of the, <laughs> out of the tower quite a bit. And you would always point that you know, in the direction that the wind is coming from. So things learned. Um, warped models were actually a big problem for me throughout my testing. Um, moisture would get into the tubes and warp them uh, maybe on one side as they dried to the sun, from the sun, which would cause warping, as you can see there. Um, it rendered a lot of my boosters and models unusable and I had to make new ones. But I found that the main solution was to store models so they don't lay on their fins and to keep them out of the sun. So this does not happen. Two minutes. Yeah. So my final results were that Model 2B and Model 4 were the highest performing models 2B flew a max of 555 feet, uh, 4 flew a max of 548, slightly lower than 2B, but Model 4 is stronger than 2B. So in conclusion, uh, the general correlation of course is that the lighter the model was, the higher it went. It was a pretty linear relationship. And while Model 2B did fly higher, it is lighter uh, and lighter than Model 4. Um, it's weaker and therefore Model 4 would be best for competition as it would be slightly more reliable. And then, okay, the main final conclusion is that pistons can increase the altitude performance of Super Rock models drastically without adding the large amount of risk of disqualification. Questions? Thank you. Them all to 82 grams. Yeah, uh, no, I, I just did the first model to 82 grams, but um, the difference between the weight of that model and whatever model I was testing, I would subtract that from 82 and make that number my target weight for that model, so it'll be consistent for one model type. Okay. 
So it wouldn't all be 82 grams. Okay. okay. And um, you, in your report, you also looked at different piston lengths. Yeah. You had a 68 inch, a 34, 34 and, and 17. 17. And you didn't say too much about that in your talk. You're comparing 68 with no Yeah. I, so my question is that when you have a certain number of flights, would that, was that spread over all four piston types, or was that all on the 68? No, no, yeah. They were all, they were all spread throughout. Um, the four uh, different configurations, but I just compared the highest and the lowest to give the percentage of increase, is that is like the most important data number. So do you recommend the 68 inch? Yes, the 68 piston with the model four design, uh, the 18 to 13 to six model, would work best, as it does work on 17 or 34, but unless, you don't want it to go as high as it can go. <laughs> and perhaps it was still going higher and higher as you went to bigger and bigger pistons. Yeah. So what if you want gone to a hundred inch piston or something? Yeah, I mean, I. Better? Yeah, I mean, sh I'm sure it would, but I'd also have to test for the risk of failure as it would go faster. Like I could um, make do further work in this, of course, because there's just so many configurations you can come up with. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I can't remember, it was either, I believe it was either NIRM 53 or NIRM 55, Chris Flanagan did a project, it was, it was the NIRM where we flew G Super Rock for the, uh, for C&T and uh, D Super Rock for, uh, for A and B, I think, so if I remember right, you, you flew that, flew the NIRM. But Chris did an R&D report on, 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 uh, on an algorithm, on an equation he developed and doggone if it didn't work, if it predicted that a tube was going to cramp, that he was going to get structural failure. He got structural failure. It predicted that it wouldn't. It didn't. I mean, it was that good. <coughs> did, 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 uh, did, did, did that come up in your, in your literature review? Did, did it, because he wasn't using a piston, did that have any, did, did, you, did you follow up on Chris's R&D, or did it really not have much bearing because <laughs> pistons and acceleration changed the, changed the dynamics of the situation? Um, I, did, I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't say that very clearly. But <laughs> did you Did you look at Chris's research and did it have any bearing on on where you would have? Where you well, were? okay. I did not actually look at his report okay. uh, since I was focusing more on the combination of piston and design. Uh, I wasn't really looking at an equation so much as an example basis to basis. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Did you do a statistical analysis to see if your results were significantly different between the different piston lengths? Oh, like between the different piston lengths? Uh, yes, there was. I did not get an actual number for that, but there was a significant difference. Um, for example, uh, I think Model 4 on a 17-inch wood. Oh, man. Let me go back. Yeah, okay, Model 4, you know, went 323 without a piston, and I know it went uh, maybe like 400 feet with a 17 inch, 484 with a 34, and then 530 with a 68 inch piston. So, I mean, I could certainly come up with the numbers for that, but there was a significant increase between. questions I was thinking if I wanted to ask about that. So, so for example, on this one, you have like 11 flights, but yes. two or three were on the 68 inch piston, a couple were on the 34 inch piston. Yeah, in, in, uh, yeah. So later. You're averaging only two or three flights per data point. Then. Yeah, it, it depends on the model. I mean, I, in later flights, I focus more on the control, I mean, as, as the baseline, and the 34 and 68 inch pistons, because, you know, 17, it was already, uh, yeah, it was already. Yeah, I saw um, that you were just sort of dropping some of those out. Yeah, yeah I was, you, yeah, testing more on like the 60 and the 34, as those would give the percent increase point, and it was more important for competition where you want to fly as high as you can. Uh, Chris, yeah. Um, do you have any data on whether or not the increased altitude between the models had? An aerodynamic reason, meaning frontal area of the model because of the transitions, or was it a weight difference that made the difference? Um, I did not do any study on like the frontal air, like area and drag, although I did um, have like take into account that 
there would be more drag with more transitions, such as in Model 4, where there were two instead of one, with like a with the Model like 3 or 2B. Um, I based a lot of my data more on the weight difference. It might be interesting to fly those models again, all at 82 grams, to see if the weight was the difference or if the drag was the difference. Yeah, I could certainly do that in further work. Time so. is presentation. So, so no, no audience questions. We ran out of time. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. We got one audience question. <laughs> all right. Thank you.